Okay, Tiziana, I will, I would start. I don't know if you want to wait some time or. Maybe two minutes more and then we can start. Okay. Okay, so I think we can start with uh, with this session. So good morning, everyone, or good evening. It depends where you are located, basically. Um, and welcome to this um, webinar, which is supposed to share uh, mountain regions, examples of innovative and sustainable tourism. Um, I will briefly introduce the the idea and the sessions that we are organizing and then uh, pass on the word to uh, Richard Creney from the Jane South Hutton Institute from Scotland, who will moderate the session and apologize for my pronunciation of your surname, which I'm not sure it's correct. Um, so first of all, who we are, uh, we are uh, the Mountain University from the University of Milan. So we are a detachment uh, which was established uh, more than 20 years ago in a small mountain municipality here in Balcamonica, which is uh, in Lombardy region in Italy um, at the Art of the Alps. And we carry out uh, research, um, teaching, as well as a uh, third mission, so dissemination activities with uh, relevant stakeholders. And we focus exclusively on uh, mountain areas uh, related issues. Um, so I would like, first of all, to promote the fact that uh, from October 2022, we will also have, um, in addiction to our uh, bachelor's degree, we will have a master's degree that will focus only on mountain areas, uh, sustainable development, um, and it will be carried out in English. Uh, so it, it has a, an international uh, outreach and um, target group. Uh, so the idea is to well, the, more than the idea, the challenge is to try and uh, set up this unique uh, course in a small municipality with, with less than 5,000 inhabitants and it's three hours away from uh, major cities. Uh, so the challenge is that, and our idea is that uh, you can carry out specific um, activities also in remote places in mountain areas. Um, so of course the master's degree will focus on many aspects, uh, mainly on bioeconomy, on sustainable and slow tourism, on economic and geographic and historical elements of mountain areas in the world, uh, as well as on communication um, aspects. So I'll invite you to visit our website to discover more and uh, see if you're interested maybe in enrolling and visiting us in Edolo. Uh, so where does this, um, webinar series come from. So basically we organized in uh, October 2021, a series of webinars and um, moments where we gathered the information on uh, the priorities that the youth uh, thinks 
um, think are relevant for mountain areas uh, development and for their sustainable future. Uh, so we organized different uh, moments uh, and then we presented the overall um, work that we were able to produce, which is called the Mountain Education and Innovation Manifesto in October 2021 uh, at Expo 2020 Dubai, which of course was delayed due to COVID. Um, so the idea was that uh, we um, wanted to understand from the youth themselves uh, what their opinion is and what uh, the research and innovation as well as the teaching institutions who focus on as a topic uh, because we think that so far in the world there, there, are, there is not so much attention to, dedicated to mountain areas and there are not so many dedicated courses and classes focusing specifically on these um, areas, which are also the ones that are um, um, having more and seeing more rapid effects due to the climate change and therefore need to find and implement innovative solutions and new sustainable approaches to these territories. Um, so, and from these uh, presentation then we decided to organize the Youth for Mountains uh, webinar series uh, to which we are connected today uh, in order to showcase some uh, best practices and examples that we were able to find from around the world um, and today we will focus uh, specifically on um, tourism uh, so the idea is to showcase best practices uh, because tourism is a major uh, economic um, asset for mountain areas all around the world and should be carried out, uh, of course, in a sustainable way. So the idea is to present uh, best practices uh, from uh, youth themselves, which uh, are able to carry out tourism uh, in a sustainable way in mountain areas. Uh, and then the last uh, webinar of the series will be, uh, will be taking place on the 3rd of May and will focus on the role of innovation um, in mountain areas. Um, so the speakers, today's speakers will uh, come from uh, different places, as you can see here on the map. Uh, so we have a presentation uh, from the Andes in Peru, and then we have uh, uh, other presentations which focus more on Europe. So the Southern Campesians in Romania, as well as the Sila National Park in Italy. And then we will have also a presentation uh, from the Himalaya region uh, in India. Um, so I will uh, pass the floor to uh, Rachel from the James Hutton Institute, who will moderate today's sessions. And thanks for the availability to Rachel and to the speakers. So thanks. Oh, thank you very much, Stefano. Um, yeah, hi, everyone. Yeah, welcome. And also thank you to Tiziana and Yunimont for asking me to moderate the session. So yes, as Stefano said, my name is Rachel Creaney and I'm a researcher working in the Social, Economic and Geographical Sciences Department at the James Hutton Institute in Scotland. Uh, we do a lot of research with rural communities and how sort of people experience issues around land and nature. But I mostly work on a four-year European Commission funded project called Moving, and this explores a range of mountain-based industries, or as we are using value chains across Europe in the hope of sort of improving or renewing these value chains in light of pressures from climate change. But we also, and sort of our involvement today, we also have a strong focus on engaging and improving the employment and empowerment opportunities for young people sort of living in these mountain areas. And so, yeah, as Stefano said, this is the second session of the Youth for Mountain seminar series, and it's focusing on sustainable tourism in mountain areas, which is obviously a key area of employment and also potential social, economic and environmental sustainability. And it was also the focus of the International Mountain Day last year. And in terms of how the session will run, we have four fantastic speakers with us today who will talk about their experiences running sustainable mountain tourism businesses or in conducting research around sustainable mountain tourism. So we have four speakers who'll speak for about 10 minutes each. And if you have any questions, put them in the chat as you go, or else we will have a round table discussion, panel discussion at the end, which hopefully 15, 20 minutes. But first up, yeah, we have Catalina Rogozan, and she's gonna speak about um, certified ecotourism, the certified ecotourism value chain in the Southern Romanian Carpathians, which is a part of the moving project, a case study. And she has a background in economics and business administration and is now a junior consultant and researcher with, within High Clare Consulting, which is a Romanian SME that focuses on high quality consultancy and policy analysis services for governmental and non-governmental organizations working on agriculture, rural development and environment. And she's working on moving, and I'm sure she'll mention this a bit in her 
talk. So over to you, Catalina. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Rachel. I will start sharing my screen. Is it all right? Yep. Okay. So, hello everyone, and thank you, Rachel, for your introduction. Uh, I am very glad to be here today and to present you the certified ecotourism model applied in Piatra Crayoli Mountains. A little bit of introduction Romania is situated in southeastern Europe and has its relief dominated by the Carpathian Mountains, which can be divided into the eastern, southern, and western Carpathian. According to the European Association of Mountain Areas latest report regarding being young in the mountain area, Romania is the country with the highest attraction rate of young people for the mountain regions. For those living in the mountain area, the main reasons for remaining there are a life close to nature, the quality of life, an attachment to the area and the presence of family. Furthermore, those that do not live in a mountain area visit it frequently to enjoy the natural environment and landscape and to go hiking. The ideal mountain area for 2040, described by the respondents of the study, is oriented towards sustainable tourism, including nature, outdoor activities, local gastronomy, and relying mainly on small local businesses. Considering the importance that sustainable tourism has to the mountain area's resilience and sustainability, we chose to research the certified ecotourist value chain within the moving project. The project's objectives, as Rachel mentioned before, are to build capacities and co-develop policy framework across Europe and to establish new or upscale value chains to contribute to the resilience and sustainability of mountain areas to climate change by conducting study cases in 23 mountain regions from 16 countries. The region selected for undertaking the moving study in Romania is the Piatra Crayoli Massive, which is widely considered as one of the jewels in the crown of the southern Romanian Carpathians. The landscape is dominated by a 25 kilometer long limestone ridge with deep gorges and caves. This creates a unique mountain landscape that is highly appreciated nationally and internationally. A total of seven communities within a total area of 866 kilometers square in two counties encompass the massive, 18% of which is designated as national park and overlaps with two important Natura 2000 sites. The Piatra Crayoli National Park is a high quality tourist destination in Romania, but it is also a fragile landscape and vulnerable ecosystem. Within moving, we have identified the main pressure for the ecosystem. The first one is the poorly planned or controlled construction of tourist accommodation and holiday homes. In the top row of the pictures, we can see some examples of rural, specific rural architecture from the Piatra Crayoli Mountains region. While in the bottom half, we can see examples of poorly planned or controlled constructions, uh, which are bigger and which are more colorful and do not fit in the ecosystem. The second one is chaotic development of leisure, recreation and tourism activities. And the third, climate change impacts. And here we have extreme rainfall and flooding, rising temperature and the risk of wildfire. These pressures are likely to increase and there is an urgent need to develop more sustainable, lower impact forms of tourism, while also maintaining the valuable income provided for the local community. Certified ecotourism has significant potential to contribute to the sustainability and resilience of mountain areas in Romania, and therefore we decided to further study it in the moving project. However, certified ecotourism is not the only form of tourism encountered in the region. Mountain and rural tourism in the region is typically all season with similar visitor numbers in both winter and summer. The neighboring villages of Bran and Moeciu especially have been one of several hotspots for mountain tourism in Romania for many years and are typical of the low to mid range tourism experience offered in many regions catering primarily for the Romanian market with some international visitors. But the traditional rural identity of the area has been increasingly eroded by an urban type overdevelopment, which increasingly discourages more discerning uh, foreign visitors, whilst also continuing to appeal to the domestic visitors. A major challenge now is how to manage continued development without risk of negative impact upon its valuable assets. Eco 
tourism is a well-established concept in the international tourist market. It has been very effectively adapted to the Romanian context by the Association of Ecotourism in Romania. IR is a membership organization and works to bring together the public and private sectors in innovative ways to create partnerships for nature conservation and sustainable tourist development. At the moment, there are 56 members, most of them small tourist businesses, such as guest houses or tourism agencies, specialized in outdoor programs and rural culture, and all have representation in the decision-making process of IR. The Eco-Romania Ecotourism Certification System was developed between 2005-2007 in accordance with the certification systems developed by the Australian Ecotourism Association and the Swedish Ecotourism Association. The IR certification system addresses two different categories of applicants. First, we have the ecotourism programs or tours provided by tour operators, uh, ecotours of maximum 15 participants, and small scale accommodation structures in rural and natural areas, eco lodges and guest houses of maximum 25 rooms. Certified ecotourism is a form of sustainable mountain tourism where the main motivation of the tourist is to observe and enjoy both nature and the traditional local customs regarding nature. The eight groups of criteria that must be complied with are sustainable management, focus on natural areas, heritage interpretation, protection of natural environment, nature conservation, development of local communities, tourist satisfaction, and correct marketing. These criteria are divided into basic and complementary. In order to obtain the certification, the business must meet all the basic criteria and at least 50% of the complementary ones. The structure of the process of certification is represented on this graph. At first, the business provider should carefully read the online guidelines for a better understanding of the concept and of his, her, and or his responsibilities. Second, the business provider must fill in an evaluation request and a self-evaluation form and send it to IR. This step is very important because it creates an honest and transparent communication between the business provider and IR. If the request is accepted, an evaluation visit is set up and the evaluation fee is paid by the business provider. The evaluation fee is around 180 euros. The fourth stage is the evaluation visit. It is compulsory that at the moment of the evaluation, the accommodation unit has guests so that the evaluators can interact with the guests. After that, the evaluators send the documents to the IR certification department, which plans the meeting of the certification committee. The last step, the certification committee will decide if and under what circumstances the Eco-Romanian certificate will be awarded. The beneficiary will receive the diploma and the certification logo after sending the agreement to use the logo. The Zernef Piatra Crayoli region is one of the 10 eco destinations promoted by IR with a range of certified ecotourism services that are offered locally in partnerships with the National Park Authority and local businesses. These services include uh, eco tours with experienced local guides to visit wolf, lynx, and bear tracks specialist hiking trips for nature photography, low-impact mountain biking trails, and small-scale low-impact accommodation. By implementing and complying with the ecotourism principle and criteria, and those receiving the ecotourism certification, all the stakeholders benefit. From the point of view of businesses, first of all, they have competitive advantage. That is, their businesses can differentiate themselves from other competitors. Also, they have the opportunity to address a niche market segment, that is environmentally responsible customers. And last but not least, free advertising on IR and other partners' websites. For the tourists, it is much easier to identify the tourist services that are environmentally conscious. Then the logo ensures a high quality of services, as well as a reduced negative impact on the environment. Also, tourists can directly contact IR and complain if certain issues appear. For the local community, the most important benefit is that the criteria that should be met includes hiring local people, using and promoting the use and purchase of local products. Thus, the income stays in the community and contribute to its sustainable development. Also, Furthermore, by providing workplaces for local people, certified eco-tourists can contribute to the downsizing of migration in the region. 
Cultural heritage and traditions are also preserved and promoted. In regards to the environment, well, the environmental protection is at the core of the ecotourist concept. Those all activities provided must preserve the local biodiversity and landscape. Here we have some characteristic pictures from our region. And thank you for your attention and please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Thank you very much, Catalina. That was great. I don't know if there's any burning questions in the chat. I don't see any, but Tiziana, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, not at the moment, so maybe no. we can go on and then at the end. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, people in your questions in the chat for afterwards, if not, and then we can um, go on to uh, introduce our next speaker is Somnath Roy, who's going to be speaking on his title is Mountain Altruist. And Somnath is a consultant and has a keen interest in mountain development he volunteers and participates in events related to mountain conservation and sustainability and he's an active member of IUCN and Mountain Research Initiative and he recently started a tour agency in Lesser Himalayan region to make tourists aware of ecotourism and its values and he wants to educate the locals and travelers of how sustainable tourism and ecotourism can play a major role in mountain development and present, prevent pollution and other environmental hazards. So Somnath, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Rachelle, and thank you, uh, Tiziana, for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on this event. I'm really honored. Uh, good morning. I uh, belong to India, so I'll, I'll be starting my presentation. I hope you all can see my screen. Uh, we basically uh, are conducting uh, ecotourism initiatives in the Lesser Himalayan region uh, to promote ecotourism and sustainable tourism in the Lesser Himalayas. So ecotourism, as you all know, it refers to the principles and practices to implement tourism in a way that can prevent environmental hazards and pollution and give tourists a lifetime experience. And this ecotourism is normally practiced by the local tour operators, the tourists, the government and the local people. We can also uh, uh, benefit by uh, reducing carbon and sulfur emissions that can reduce acid rain and deforestation, which comes as a part of sustainable tourism. Ecotourism has also helped to create employment opportunities for the local community, thereby promoting a rural, a rural empowerment and development of the economy in the mountainous regions. Now, how does ecotourism contribute to the well-being of the community uh, like Lesser Himalayas where we operate? We are basically using fuel efficient uh, solutions like solar power, batteries, and power. We are strictly prohibited from using plastic water bottles and we are using water filters, reusable bags, containers, and fuel-efficient cars, and vehicles operated by batteries. Uh, thus, implementing ecotourism also helps to eradicate the pollution levels and keep a check on the air quality in the surrounding environment. Therefore, we can get a greener environment, and we can uh, revive the affected ecosystem in the region. Being a tour operator, we are a dedicated team of tourism professionals who are actually helping uh, tourists, tourists and travelers to, con to conquer this part of the region. Our team consists of a, a group of entrepreneurs who are interested in sustainable development in the mountains. Uh, we take tourists and help them to conquer the natural and undisturbed areas and contribute to ecotourism development and initiatives. You can, for, uh, you can find more about us on our site, uh, mountainaltruist.com, where we provide uh, uh, different packages to uh, travelers coming from different parts of the world. This includes the expeditions package, the green tourism package, uh, the conservation tourism package, and so on. So coming to our activities, uh, uh, we uh, mainly help uh, travelers explore the ecotourism plantation sites in the Lesser Himalayan region. Uh, we can see that uh, plants, especially of different varieties, thriving in huge numbers in these regions and can be considered an important place to set up plantation sites, uh, uh, which has been done uh, mostly by locals and the farmers. Here, the soil management is, uh, process is very easy and because of the good climatic conditions and uh, adequate rainfall, uh, we are able to set up plantation sites that actually contributes to the environment. A lot of organic products and uh, uh, are also being used and the use of chemical fertilizers are also uh, like uh, prevented like uh, normally in estates and uh, where wherever there is a plantation uh, site 
uh, people are now uh, switching on to the organic products and they are not using the uh, chemical fertilizers which can have a, a negative effect uh, so uh, the farmers and the local people have set up their own organic gardens and also grown a variety of fruits and organic products in the lesser himalayan region as you can see varieties of plants you can see from the picture like varieties of plants have been grown in this part of the region that contributes to the floral tourism uh, as i as i said earlier the growth of plants is mostly complemented by factors like adequate rainfall uh, the, good, the good and the cold climatic conditions and the healthy soil since the soil is good uh, the monsoon season also com complements the growth of plants in these regions and we can see widespread uh, rainfall in this part of the region mostly around the months of uh, july august and september so uh, we can grow a lot of nurseries and uh, uh, different clonal varieties are also grown to support the nurseries as we can have uh, some bad climatic conditions that can actually uh, cause a damage to the uh, grown varieties so that's why we grow the clonal varieties as well uh, temperature of the re uh, region remains mostly unpredictable in the months of june july august and september these four months are very unpredictable also we can see some snowfall in the winter so but uh, in spite of the adverse climatic conditions uh, there is no harm to the uh, plants or the uh, plantation size that have been uh, that have been set up in this region um, we just uh, maintain uh, our we also have some uh, practices like rainwater harvesting and all so that uh, we don't uh, fall short of water in case the plants plants are getting dried up so uh, these conditions uh, are taken care of before uh, any plantation sites have been set up in the region and we take tourists and travelers to explore these plantation sites okay now we come to the tea plantation which is a, a very famous uh, setup in this part of the country uh, because we have the geographical tag Uh, so the tea that is grown in this part of the region has the unique aromatic flavor and uh, that is why it is uh, very widely known uh, and we have a uh, big medium and small size gardens thriving in this part of the region uh, the soil and the climatic conditions makes it very conducive to uh, grow the great quality tea uh, that contributes to the tea tourism tea tourism is very popular and uh, very famous in this part of the country and it is also exported to uh, other countries because of its unique and aromatic flavor Uh, so it has a huge demand now we come to mountain tourism uh, as the name suggests mountain altruism we, uh, we selected this name because uh, we plan to uh, contribute to mountain tourism and uh, we can also see the uh, world's third highest peak uh, that is mount kanchenjunga from this part of the country uh, tourists also come from uh, different parts of the region uh, mostly foreign tourists we can see indian tourists as well who come to explore the different flavors this part of the lesser himalayan region offers to travelers so we as a team uh, basically uh, contribute to the eco tourism development in the region we are also tied up with a local ngo with uh, through uh, that local ngo we also uh, help the local youth uh, to get some jobs and contribute to sustainable development in the mountains so we basically work on uh, some eco tourism initiatives uh, as being uh, discussed in this slide Uh, we normally take our uh, tourists and travelers to undisturbed natural areas and we also educate them about the eco tourism practices and policies that they need to follow uh, when they uh, visit any eco tourism sites so uh, as 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 you can see in this part of the country we have lot of uh, plantation and we have lot of factories where uh, tea and other crops are grown and uh, they are manufactured so uh, the uh, the factories and the uh, plantation sites are kept clean and they are they maintain the uh, sanitation and the hygiene because tourists often come with their uh, family and friends to explore these sites also there has been some uh, afforestation policy set up by the government uh, to prevent cutting of trees uh, without any permission so uh, that is being strictly monitored and taken care in this part of the country because uh, tree cutting is an offense and anybody found guilty is liable to be punished Uh, there are also some other initiatives like uh, setting up remote sensing data by the tourism officials in the protected areas we have some protected areas in this part of the country where the uh, sale of illegal uh, illegal wildlife drugs and animal poaching are also being taken care uh, drones are uh, something that is set up uh, occasionally by the tourism of officials to trace any wildlife and threatening activities that can harm the ecosystem in an adverse manner so we have a lot of parks and gardens as discussed and uh, everything is being taken care to ensure that uh, proper sanitation and hygiene and everything is maintained and the ecosystem is well preserved 
and it gives a, a chance for other people and uh, foreigners coming from different parts of the country to explore this part of the region. So that is how we are contributing to ecotourism development from our end. Also, there are some policies set up by the government. They also uh, help in ecotourism. They have developed some ecotourism sites as well in, in this part of the country. There are uh, one or two important ecotourism sites here, uh, which are very famous. So uh, that is purely being taken care of by the government. As a part of a, a private agency, so uh, we just uh, follow these rules and guidelines. And uh, we have helped to set up the ecotourism initiatives and we are helping tourists and uh, travelers coming from different parts of the country. So uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, we, you can find our company name in this slide. So if you have any doubts or issues, you can uh, reach, uh, reach me personally through email or anytime if you want. So uh, thank you all for listening to me. All have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Somnath. That was great. And yeah, please keep putting your questions in the chat for the end, or we will come to them in the panel. And um, next up, we have Rita Materi, and she is responsible for international relations on behalf of Casa de la Montana Bed and Bike. And she has a degree in modern languages and cultures. And currently, in addition to teaching on this subject, she manages relations with foreign customers and suppliers on behalf of Casa de la Montana. And um, for years, she's also been living and working as a businesswoman in a family run reception and catering business, taking care of relations with foreign countries. In addition, she's responsible for structuring tours, excursions, and walks among the, path, the paths of the park, contributing to providing all foreign guests an experience that is as, as authentic as possible. So Rita, over to you. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see? Not yet, but yes. I think it's okay. coming. No. Mm. Oh, no, yeah, it's fine. I think yeah. It's, yeah, it's is everything okay? You can see? Yeah. Okay, Perfect. thank you. So I'm Rita and I'm very glad to be here. Uh, today I want to introduce you to our project Casa de la Montagna. And from a literary point of view, uh, it can be translated as uh, the mountain home. And we want to use the word home instead of house because we think that uh, uh, when a tourist come to our uh, uh, come to our home it's like uh, he or she is uh, at his own home we are in a little village called Lorica in the south of Italy our region is called Calabria and uh, we are part of the Sila National Park this project was born about six years ago and um, it was born uh, thanks to young mountain lovers uh, who had this uh, wonderful love and passion for their mountain. So this project is improved. It was improved, but it is still improved thanks to meetings and above all, thanks to guest feedback. What are our main features? Our main features are mission, services and customer care, sustainability, mountain culture, renovation of the existing things, widespread and shared spaces. So uh, as a, uh, you can see Casa della Montagna, it is a journey that takes you on because we want to reassure, to give you an emotion and to make you curious. And the most important goal for our business is protecting our mountain but at the same time promote our mountain. Of course, it is a great adventure and we face many obstacles, but, and we are facing everyday obstacles, but we want to overcome them. It was really hard, above all at the beginning, because it was difficult to make people understand the importance of a different kind of tourism a neco-friendly tourism and a sustainable tourism. And at the beginning, it was uh, difficult um, also because the chalet's owners were mistrustful, such as the guests too, because they were afraid of uh, these uh, different kind of tourists. Since we have uh, different uh, tiny mountain houses, 
and uh, um, every guest can enjoy a different kind of holiday. But we want to underline this idea of holiday characterized by authenticity and the love for our mountain, for our Sierra Prato. Uh, just to give you some numbers, uh, during these years, we had many guests from all over the world. Of course, uh, about, uh, it's about the 60% are Italians, but we have also 40% of foreign tourists. And uh, in reality, our great achievement is uh, enhancing uh, in the, the beauty of uh, the Silla National Parks thanks to its peculiarities by inventing nothing because we are doing in reality nothing. It's our mountain who is working. So it's uh, the importance is given to our mountain. We are just protecting our mountain and we are promoting it. Um, our winning features are, is the main thing for us, the most important thing is that we are deeply connected to the mountain. Uh, then we have uh, some business partners who believed and shared our idea uh, of business. Then we are simple people who simply love their, uh, their home. And now another feature really important for us is perseverance and foresight. The basis of our business, the most important feature is our mountain. So is enacing our land that is a, a Sila, the Sila National Park and it was formally and legally uh, recognized. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you some pictures, some photos from our land, because I think that in this case, pictures can tell you more words uh, and can give you more emotions than my words. We have a lot of woods. The main, uh, the typical tree of our woods is the pine tree. And uh, we are also some lakes, a couple of lakes, but we are really lucky because uh, in, in these, all these beautiful and natural treasures, such as flowers, trees, animals, we are um, at about 2,000 meters above the sea level, but just in one hour by car, we can reach the seaside. So uh, in this picture, you can see our lake and our village is uh, by there. Uh, it is uh, the Arbo Lake. Uh, this is an example of our pine tree woods. And we think that uh, territories such as uh, the Sila National Parks, uh, the national parks in general and protected areas need to be promoted, but they need to be promoted in the right way. You have to protect them. You don't have to exploit them. And, but at the same time, you can guess a lot of people because it is important to, to make other people feel uh, the, the beauty of these areas, but you have to respect them. Um, then um, I, I want to say, to tell you that, uh, of course, the Sila National Park was legally recognized by a law in the 1968, but it was really born when its inhabitants understood the importance of their mountain, when they understood that in reality, they were living in a treasure and this treasure was to be protected. Uh, our um, Sila National Park is really big because it includes uh, uh, all parts of our region and it is divided into three parts, Sila Grande, so the big Sila, the little Sila and the Greek Sila because uh, we are really um, lucky since we have also some uh, uh, treasures from uh, the uh, past invasion from the Greek. In this picture, you can see, of course, our treasures, so the berries and our, our woods, animals, and above all, one of our beautiful landscapes covered by the snow. So we, we are really lucky and we think that every single animal, every single flower, every single food, is like a pearl for us. And each pearl is part of a wonderful necklace, necklace called biodiversity. 
Uh, so everything is important for us. And of course, I'll, I'm going to show you what in reality then we do with Casa della Montagna. These are our partners, they share our ideas. And uh, um, in, 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 uh, in particular, these are our services and activities. We just offer to our guests guided tours, and we uh, we can also we have the right equipment for them. So we uh, we do e-bike tour, trekking, snow trek, snowshoe hike, and ski. But in some villages uh, really nearby us, we can do tour villages. A tour of the villages uh, thanks uh, to the steam train so um, not only you can go by yourself on foot and see the everything but you can also see it by the train and then we want we want to promote also the local pro products so in in, uh, in each house we have uh, we choose to uh, to use local food for everything breakfast lunch and dinner what can you find in the mountain houses in the mountain house, houses, uh, in each house, you can find uh, all the outdoor equipment. So, for example, the snowshoes, maps. You can also rent bikes, or you can have services like, like the bike wash and the bike garage. At the same time, you can find local food and local wine. In, in fact, in each house, you can find a little mountain pantry where you can taste our flavor. And then we think that another treasure is uh, uh, also the food for our mind. So we have uh, some little libraries and uh, bookshops where you can find uh, magazines or books related to the mountain life. This is our logo. And you can see the pictures of, uh, um, of some activities that we can just uh, suggest to, to our guests. And uh, here we have uh, other pictures. In this case, I want to show you some pictures of our houses. This is uh, one house, then this is the second. Uh, we can guest up to 25 people, but we are improving our uh, project and we are um, organizing other, other houses. As you can see in the pictures of the living rooms and the bedrooms, we, uh, we choose uh, also natural materials for our houses, like wood and rocks. And uh, the, uh, these are our, uh, what, what you can see when you, for example, come to, our, to one of our houses. This is uh, one of our biggest treasure, our Arrow Lake. And uh, of course, uh, guests can practice um, sports, uh, always remembering that the most important thing is respecting the lake and the animals that live in it. Then uh, we promote, as I said before, example of local food like wine or the dairy products, since we have a lot of um, farms so they produce uh, delicious uh, food. And uh, we think that in reality, we are not doing nothing because, um, because the real treasure is uh, under our feet. The real treasure is our mountain. And for this reason, uh, we, we are lucky just for this. So thank you. And I hope to see you in uh, our mountain just to show you by person what I told to you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you very much, Rita. It's a beautiful place, part of the world. Um, last but not least, we have Juan Carlos Flores, who's gonna speak about Andean Lodges. And so Juan Carlos is a professional in tourism and he graduated from the first tourism school in Peru, which is sent, sent for tour. And he has more than 20 years experience in management operations and development of community-based tourism products with a focus on sustainable and inclusive partnerships with communities originally from Cusco. He has also experienced is also experienced in the organization and production of trail running international events in Peru. So over to you, Juan Carlos. 
Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thanks, uh, Rachel. I'm very happy to be here among such an amazing group of adventurous trial professionals. Uh, and of course, I want to learn a, a little bit more about your business, of course. And I hope to this presentation can um, uh, um, have all the things that you are looking for in this uh, in this uh, webinar. Well, uh, my name is Juan Carlos. I'm the general manager at Andean Loches, um, a community-based ecotourism company that basically offers um, a lodge-to-lodge -lodge mountain trekking experiences in the high southern Andes of, of Peru. Andean Loches uh, works in very close association with the native community of herders and textile weavers who lives near to Ausangate Mountain. Uh, Ausangate Mountain is one of the most secret mountains uh, of, the Quech of the Quechua people. Um, just to have an, an idea of where we are, uh, we are located in the southern part of um, Cusco, 100 kilometers uh, from Cusco. Uh, here is Ausangate. Uh, Ausangate, um, in this map, you can you can see it is the, the white uh, snow carpet here. And uh, in around here, we have a really nice circuit uh, or trails for trekking and also climbing. Uh, and also we have four, four lodges, um, four eco lodges around this, in this place. No? Um, this is uh, Ausangate mountain. Um, actually is one of the most highest mountains in, in Peru, in Cusco, of course. Uh, the elevation of this mountain uh, is more than 6,300 meters above the sea level. And this is one of our lodges, actually is the highest lodges in, in the world. Um, why is important Ausangate? Um, because uh, People in, in, in the Andes believe in the spirit and the spirit of the mountains, and also they believe in the Pachamama. And Ausangate has the particularity of the, um, the union of the um, male energy with the female energy makes the alpacas, makes the llamas. I mean, uh, this place is the, the, the place where the life for alpacas and uh, of course herders uh, starts so this is the reason why also that is very important because uh, in that area there um, are many communities a herder communities that are living since probably six thousand years ago and you can imagine how difficult could be uh, start living uh, up there um, if we want to talk about uh, a herder culture, a herder community, we must talk about uh, the weavers. The, the weavers um, are, uh, most of uh, the weavers are ladies, uh, are women, and they, they are in charge of obtaining the wood from the alpacas. And of course, to, for dressing and also uh, to eat the meat of, of the alpaca. Um, of course, all the of um, being a herder in in Ausangate uh, has has some particularities because they they have some process uh, in order to to give some respect to the mountains. I mean, for example, as you, as you can see in this picture, uh, they are putting some earrings in in with the llamas at the llamas is because uh, they are decorating the llamas in order to pass through this mountain. To, to the mountain of Sangate. Why? Because um, they believe that um, if you are going to pass through one of the most important and secret places, you, you have to be well dressed, uh, dressed of, of course. You know? So um, in all of our programs, we, we, we try to include this, this culture uh, for all of our experiences. We use llamas to, for carrying all of our luggages. Uh, so we, we are giving more work to the llamas because um, the llamas are in charge of the transportation of the luggages. Uh, we work with uh, two associations, weaver associations, and the, those women are in charge of the weaving demonstration. They, they show you how, how to weave and you can buy uh, directly all the products from, from those ladies. And of course, um, the religion, the Andean religion is very important. And this is not part of a show. 
You know, this is how they start a llama expedition. If they're gonna use a, a llama, they have to ask permission to the Pachamama and they have to be well-dressed in order to, to, to pass through this uh, uh, important uh, mountain. Um, just to resume how we were working in, in the past um, uh, 20 years, you're probably very familiar with, with this term, uh, globalization, and it's basically think uh, global in order to act local. I mean, um, the adaptation of international products or international needs, like the trekking, around the particularity of a local culture, which they are sold, of course. Uh, so this is uh, how we were working for the past, um, past years. Um, this is um, uh, our company, uh, the community of Chilka and Osefina are partnership in, in our company. They have 20% uh, of participation in the company. They have the majority particip participation in the company. And we have uh, a team that help them in the decision making process. I mean, we also have other 10 investors. They have um, uh, less uh, participation than the community members, but uh, they work is basically help them in the decision uh, making uh, process. Okay, we also they also have some help from the administrative office. Uh, here I am is um, I'm the general manager. manager. I'm, I'm in this part of the organization. And also we, uh, we have the operation uh, of all of our tourists made it by the locals. So yes, of course, we are a tour operator, but behind the scenes, we are a tourism school. And we have a bunch of courses, uh, courses of services, of first aid, housekeeping, cuisine, um, all the protocols that we are following now. And the characteristic of these, uh, of all of those courses are, is uh, that are uh, translated into Quechua. And I think we are the only one company in Peru that um, has those um, courses uh, translated in Quechua in order to, to give uh, the best information to the people. And uh, I know that they are, uh, they are very, very happy um, to, to learn. And also uh, for them it's easier because they understand uh, the, the message if you talk in the same language, of course. No? Uh, so um, the, the behind the scenes of Anden Loches, uh, we have a lot of courses uh, during the whole year, every year uh, for the community members and also for, for the guides, of course. And, and for this business model, we have some certifications, of course. Uh, we have a, a corporate social responsibility certification made by Tourset. Um, and also we compensate all of our emissions through Regenera. Regenera is an um, ONG uh, based in Cusco. Uh, and they keep uh, some uh, forests at the Manu National Park in, in Cusco. So we are part of this, um, this big um, uh, company. Well, as you can see, all of our departures uh, have some uh, good, very safety standards. So we have well-trained people, we have satellite phones, we, we have first uh, kids, oxygen, we have horses uh, in case you, you, you feel tired or you need an evacuation. We have a hyperbaric uh, um, chamber, portable hyperbaric chamber. Uh, that we use normally when we we are evacuating a, a, a person and of course we are following this international uh, pro biosafety protocols for now um, in order to understand a little bit more of our products um, this is a, a, a map where um, we are uh, the black lines are our trekking routes and the Red lines are our climbing route, and uh, around here we have uh, the, the four lodges. Um, most of the tours pass through this incredible place, it's called the Rainbow Mountain. Actually, the, the correct name is Vinicunca. Um, and we don't operate uh, a full day tour. 
we don't believe that the uh, a one day tour is uh, is the correct way to operate in in this place with the communities so we we spend, we, we sell uh, programs is two days one night uh, and most of all of our programs pass through this incredible place is the second most visited place after Machu Picchu uh, and it's probably uh, our fault of course because we were um, developing this this place uh, since the last 20 years mm. the best season of course uh, between april and october uh, this is our dry season um, those are our lodges uh, we have four lodges chilcatambo machuracay and wampococha those three lodges are quite similar um, it's a bill of two two floors and this one is a little bit different. Uh, is um, is a um, one floor construction, uh, and it's very important for us because uh, this uh, lodge was built by the community, and it, this is the reason why they have twenty percent of participations in in the company. Um, well, the the lodges um, has um, eight rooms, eight double rooms. We can accommodate also some some triples if it's needed. Uh, all the rooms has private bathrooms. We don't have electricity. We use candles and solar lamps. And luckily, we uh, we have hot shower. We use propane uh, to heat the, the the shower, but um, a little bit difficult to get the hot shower. But we we have a hot shower at at this altitude, and. And just to finish, uh, one of the most important things that uh, we, we were doing in, in, in order to enjoy all of our programs is a good acclimatization because of the high altitude of, of this place. Um, well, this is what we are doing in Ausangate. Um, I don't know if you have any question. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Juan Carlos. That was great. And um, now, we can open up to a panel discussion and um, so please yeah put any questions you want in the chat or you can raise your hand in the reactions button and um, maybe whilst everyone's thinking of their questions i could start off with one question that's okay so maybe the question for all of you if you could speak to a young person starting out in a tourism business sort of what three things would you think are most important and what is the biggest challenge that you've faced or you've seen in your research and maybe first we can go to Juan Carlos and work backwards. Can you repeat, please? Um, if like if you were speaking to a young person who wanted to start a tourism business, what do you think are the three most important things, and what is the biggest challenge that you faced? Well, uh, I think one of the, of the most uh, I'm talking about um, uh, the work with Andean communities because um, you know uh, we we work with two Andean communities and I think one of the most difficult things that we um, we uh, also have now is uh, uh, the social conflict and now um, in the territory of Ausangate is not well divided so nobody knows uh, who is the owner of the land because um, the, the government doesn't care about that and that's the reason why there are a lot of conflict uh, and those those conflicts are since many years ago and still the conflict uh, after so one of the thing is uh, a good relationship with the Andean communities of course um, and uh, that gonna take a lot of time probably gonna take the whole life because you have to keep the you have to maintain the the good relationship all the time it's not a work that you start the first years and then you you wait for the results uh, you have to work of course day by day and you have to continue until uh, i hope the rest of my life <laughs> oh thank you i don't know rita or catalina or sonda oh, okay um, i just want to to answer uh, remembering remembering what uh, is happening uh, here in uh, in my village in Lorica or in my region Calabria unfortunately uh, during the years and the century our region was characterized by people who left our country to go abroad to go in the north of Italy to find a job because uh, here we have uh, 
a few job opportunities. And I think that uh, this is a very hard thing to do. But I think that uh, the um, people who stay here in, uh, in our mountain are braver because uh, they have to, um, uh, to invent, they have to understand uh, what to do in reality. So I think that our mountain is a, is a treasure for us. And it told us that respecting the mountain, we can have a job, we can live here, and we can make other people know that there is a, there are, there is a lot to think, there are a lot of things to see, and a lot of things to do in our mountain, in the nature, just coming in the woods and just respecting everything, the animals, the lake, the plants, you can uh, also live here, you can improve your life, and uh, you can promote your mountain. So uh, at the beginning, it can be very difficult, but uh, if you believe uh, in what you are doing, uh, and if you, if you like your mountain, also if you are alone, uh, up uh, two meters above the sea level, you can just have a wonderful life, thanks to the nature. Oh, that's a great answer. Thank you. Um, so I'm now for Catalina. Uh, I'll go first, till some uh, opens yeah. the camera. Uh, well, uh, our biggest challenge can be like a mix of the two previous ones. So in the region, there is a historic uh, disregard between uh, the people living there. So I think the biggest challenge is for a newcomer or for a young entrepreneur is to create a collaboration, a partnership with uh, IR, with the public institutions, which are not that involved as they should be, uh, and with its neighbors. Neighbors that can be other ecotourist businesses, can be other businesses that do not quite respect the nature or the local community heritage or uh, the local architecture. And also, uh, yeah, like partnership and collaboration is, is, is the biggest challenge. Uh, what uh, the person should do in order to improve the community and to create a more sustainable tourism in the area, uh, as I said, it should focus on uh, respecting and complying with the local architecture, which for us is a big challenge because the landscape, which as Rita also said, is our biggest asset. You know, people come to mountains to, to view the landscape and to feel reconnecting with nature. Um, in order to keep the landscape as it is, we need to, to respect certain regulations. Uh, then to continue with measures in protecting the biodiversity, especially the large carnivores, which are a big attraction to the area, but are also uh, pressured by poaching and by certain people. And last, I really like Juan Carlos' example of how communities are involved and how they are presenting their heritage, their waving to the tourists. Uh, this social aspect is still quite lacking in our ecotourist uh, system. So I think it will be great to, to uh, integrate this and to develop it, to not forget our history, our traditions, because they are beautiful and they need to be promoted more. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, being a newcomer, it was difficult for me as well to set up something. So uh, it took us a lot of time and patience to uh, develop something like this because the ecosystem is uh, somewhat uh, different. And as I spoke in this slide, we have some adverse climatic conditions in this part of the country, mostly during the months of June to September. So setting everything there is a big challenge. Uh, actually, uh, we have a lot of people who are migrating to other cities uh, because of lack of jobs and uh, other stuffs. Uh, but still, uh, people who love mountains and who prefer to stay by uh, nature and close to nature, some people are staying there, but life is a bit challenging and difficult uh, considering the uh, harsh climatic conditions and the lack of jobs and other stuffs. Uh, the government is uh, taking some steps to uh, improve like uh, they are uh, setting up uh, industries and uh, they're also uh, making it a point to ensure that people living in the mountains do not have to go to other places in search of jobs or any other stuff. 
So hopefully we can see some improvements in the next five years down the line in this part of the country, but we are still not sure. So right now life is a bit difficult and uh, harsh as compared to uh, people living in cities. Uh, so uh, setting up something there is uh, would be really helpful for the people who are staying there. And uh, we also uh, expect that uh, some turnaround will happen in the next five years. That's Thank it for you. me. Don't know if any of you want to add anything based on what the other speakers have said, feel free. But no pressure. If not yet, please keep raising your hands or put questions in the chat. But the next question is from Blanca and she asks to all speakers, um, given that most of you are young people, what do you think would be the main opportunity that sustainable tourism brings for young people to stay in mountain areas and interact more with the communities? Everyone wants to go first. I can pick somebody. Yeah, I can go first. <laughs> uh, in my point of view, I think the main opportunity is an income, and more specifically, maybe a continuous income, because uh, young people do need income in order to, to lead a life, even in mountain areas. And furthermore, by developing these uh, sustainable tourists, the income that comes into a community can be used in order to develop the infrastructure of the community. And I'm not speaking only about roads, I'm speaking about medical infrastructure, educational infrastructure, which is quite lacking in some mountain areas in our region. Thank you, Catalina. Rita, Juan Carlos, Samba, if anyone have a response? Yes, I can, I can be the next. <laughs> well, um, since my point of view, uh, working with Andean communities, uh, one of the most important challenge that the ecotourism has in this area is being part of the community, but not as a primary or principal economy activity. We, we must to be focused in the principal economy that is being a herder. That is the principal economy of, of, the, uh, of the community. And the, the, I think the, the next step is trying to give more information to those guys in order to make the understanding for them that the, uh, being a herder uh, is the principal thing that they must work on uh, every day, not in ecotourism exactly. Mm, and that, that's, that is my, my, my point from working with the, with the communities. Oh, that's a very good point. Oh, Rita? Okay. Uh, um, from my point of view, I can say that at the beginning, um, it was uh, really difficult for, for us as a young people to, to keep in touch with the community who were characterized by old people who have a different way of thinking. Because uh, I think that Catalina said before, uh, an important thing is uh, collaboration. In the place where I live, uh, this is uh, uh, a difficult thing to obtain because uh, um, the other people believe that they have to work by their own. But this is, uh, this is not uh, in, is exact because the most important thing is uh, working together because working together and the collaboration with the other uh, business companies uh, and the community who knows the places, who knows the, the mountain, can, uh, can help us to, uh, to have a success in life and uh, in living in a mountain. Thank you. Some love. Somnath, would you like to respond? Maybe you can take uh, No, uh, nothing from my side. No, no problem. Well, and there's a question, someone has a hand up. Ishtiag, would you like to ask a question? Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Ishtiag from Pakistan, and uh, we are also living in the mountain community in northern Pakistan. Um, a good presentation. Uh, and uh, this, the discussion being carried out, uh, they focus about role of community 
And uh, yes, I agreed with the comments of Rita that uh, collaboration is very important in this modern era. And uh, like uh, we have a resilient community in the northern mountain areas of Pakistan. Uh, so uh, we have a mixed, uh, like uh, uh, we have some government uh, infrastructure and plans, some NGOs, and then uh, other aspect that is very important that our community are much res resilient and they are working on these areas, uh, conservation, promoting uh, ecotourism, agro-based tourism, and uh, we have some unique species over here like Himalayan ibex, snow leopard, uh, brown bear. These are rare species around the world. And we have plenty of these species of agrotourism, ecotourism. We have yak in these mountain areas generating a great economy. Local people uh, mostly rely on organic food or local naturally grown foods. So these are linked with the sustainable environment, uh, uh, ecosystem health, and well-being of local community. So yes, we can, uh, like mountain communities, collaborate with each other to promote uh, tourism, uh, agrarian economy, uh, biodiversity, and uh, uh, green economy. Thank you. Oh, would anyone like to respond to Ishtag's comment? If not, I can ask another question. Or I don't know if I, oh, sorry, no, Catalina, are you gonna? No, no, I, I just wanted to say that, yeah, I think, uh, all the cases presented today also have extremely different biodiversity that should be protected. And it's very good to see that in all parts of the world, this is a priority and people do put their efforts in order to protect it. Thank you. Um, I, I had wondered um, a question from myself, sort of, I guess, one of the always the negatives of tourism industry is sort of that there's many jobs in the summer and they, but not necessarily these jobs are not year round or not long term enough and I wondered if there's if you saw this as a problem and how sort of your businesses or your regions were trying to prevent these issues if anyone has a, a view. I can go first. <laughs> uh, in the example of Piatra Kraylis of Nash region, there is uh, both summer uh, and winter tourists. So then we can say that it's quite continuous uh, stream of income coming to the community. In the winter, they are skiing. Uh, there are special guides going after different kinds of animals. And in the summer, it is more uh, mountain trails, mountain hiking, uh, bear wolf tracking and so on. But uh, we do have other regions when, where there is a, diff, uh, a great uh, difference between the summer and winter tourism. And then there is a need of a more uh, development in the area in order to, to develop different activities that could attract tourists also during, uh, during winter or summer. Uh, for example, uh, in Piazza Carli Zernes, there is also a center of activities where people could go and play different games and it's not that sustainable so there is still more to more work to do there but some in beginning ideas so to say are starting to arise in the community and people are starting to put questions how can we bring uh, customers also the the pandemic really hit the uh, more the ecotourist activities than the two uh, the other type of uh, touristic activities. So now they are making a list of plans to send to the uh, government in order to see how uh, the business providers can best be helped and how can they continue their activities and without a uh, lot to lose. Thank you, Catalina. I don't know if anyone else would like to add anything to say on it. I can say something about this. 
in this uh, in 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 the place where I live, uh, of course, uh, summer and winter are the best uh, time of the years, and we have a lot of tourists, uh, guests, and we work a lot. While in autumn and spring, uh, it's um, it's more difficult to promote uh, the, the activities to do, but because people are used to, uh, to have holiday in summer and winter, but mm, mm, this is not an obstacle for us because uh, we are trying to invent some, something for every, every season. And uh, we uh, try to... Um, um, uh, to, to, to involve, uh, to call also, for example, schools uh, with students uh, so they can come in the spring uh, and uh, in autumn when uh, we have uh, no, we don't have a lot of work uh, with guests uh, and uh, they can know their land because unfortunately there are a lot of people who live here and uh, they don't know. They don't know their month, they don't know the place where they live. Sometimes uh, it happened to me that uh, um, a person who comes from uh, New York told uh, me, ah, do you know that near by, near by your house there is something? And uh, so in, in, we are trying to work in also in, uh, in, this, uh, in this way. Thank you. Yeah, so another one, Carlos, if you have anything to add. Yeah, for uh, this part of the country, we have summer as the best time to do something. Uh, rainy season is uh, really very unpredictable. So uh, people are a bit skeptical and they uh, even come down uh, from the mountains and they have their uh, reserve stays in the plain land. Uh, so summer is the best time. Winter is also a good time to start new activities uh, as we can see a lot of uh, people uh, setting up uh, some business activities so that they can support the livelihood so uh, overall i think summer and uh, winter months are uh, good here and uh, people can uh, really think of doing something uh, except the uh, monsoon and the autumn season uh, that, that that's a bit uh, tricky and problematic in this part of the country that's fair. Oh, one Carlos, or don't know if you have it in, that's fine. Um, well, uh, in my case, um, Andean Lodges has uh, some, uh, has some two seasons, uh, the dry season and the, the dry season. And we normally operate for six months uh, in, in one year. So the other six months we spend, uh, with uh, the time with uh, with those courses, uh, trying to give more information to the people, uh, but um, I think uh, one of the challenge now uh, is trying to uh, make courses in order to uh, give more uh, tools to the to the community members uh, in order to have more um, local things like uh, uh, growing llamas, growing alpacas. So uh, we are focusing as well in developing uh, their local culture, their local things. And we are trying to help them with the textile weavers, with the, um, uh, with the llamas, with the, they are also growing trouts. So we, we, we work in, in, in both uh, scenarios, in the tourism and also in all the needs that the community really needs. Because uh, as, I, as I already say, uh, the principal economy is being a herder. So that's our object in, in Andean Lodges, uh, that make the tourism, the, uh, make the tourism a, a, an alternative, but not a, a principal uh, um, in common things for, for, for the economy, you know? Oh, that's great. Okay, we still have a few minutes left for questions, so please continue to add any to the chat or raise your hand. In the meantime, I could ask, um, so we're here and we're all representing many regions and countries of the world sort of thing. So how do you think cooperation between different regions of the world could sort of contribute to new opportunities for young people? Because I know you mentioned different, like the importance of cooperation, things. in what ways do you think this could work? Or 
Well, um, in my opinion, I think the most important contribution that cooperation can bring even from different regions, from different countries, is learning from each other's experiences. Like, uh, it, it's very nice to see that Rita and Juan Carlos and Somnat ha have similar challenges to a certain degree. So this can be shared and people can talk and come up with the best solutions. Um, so that is good. Also learning that you are not unique in your problems at the same. And there is a solution somewhere that can be encouraging for a young entrepreneur that is just starting his business or her business. So yeah, I think it will be great if, uh, if more international <laughs> collaboration happens, of course. Of course, also based that uh, at local level, cooperation is well established and people do cooperate between each other. I agree. I agree with Catalina because sometimes, uh, and uh, you know, when you live uh, in a mountain, you just feel alone because you say, oh, what, what I do now? What can I do? Maybe I'm, uh, I'm wrong, but uh, today this, uh, this webinar is uh, fantastic because uh, I can see that uh, in reality, in other parts of all over the world, there are young people who love mountain and uh, they are working like me. And maybe it um, it could be really it could be fantastic if one day we can uh, cooperate. And uh, it's a dream, but I think that uh, we are young enough and strong enough to make it a reality. We just have uh, to work and to believe in it. I think that is important. Thank you, Vita. Yeah, no, yeah. Juan Carlos, if you have anything to add, please go ahead. Uh, well, um, talking about uh, our work and tandem lodges, I think the, the best thing that we did uh, uh, was the courses that we, we, we give to all the community because they can be hired uh, for other companies, not just uh, for Andean lodges. I mean, uh, all of our work that we are doing now is uh, for the community and the community is not just the work for Andean Lodges, it's uh, for the tourism in general in Cusco and of course uh, in Peru, because uh, as you know, uh, if you talk about tourism in, Cus in, in Peru, you are talking about Cusco, of course, because it's the, one of the most important places. And yes, I, I think uh, the idea is uh, to re replicate this uh, business model and of course, share it with uh, more people uh, like, like this place in order to, to show how the tourism is working in, in the whole world. That's great, thank you so much. Now, if anyone else has anything to add, or maybe that is a good place to finish on some inspiration. <laughs> and yeah, so thank you so much everyone for your great presentations and comments and questions. And yet, yeah, as Tiziana put in the chat, the third final session is on the 3rd of May and it's looking at the role of technology and innovation in mountain youth entrepreneurship. So please come along to that. But thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Thank you all. Thank you.